I was afraid of... Nah, don't you know the bad characters never die in a war? Excuse me, I saw my old friend and I... This is my dear and crazy friend, Charles Wills. Miss Ellsworth. Miss Ellsworth. Marion, please. American? You, you, you've been here all through this? Oh, we never left. Dad and I stayed on in an occupied France, Leon mostly. How do you know Claude? Oh, he was an observer with our outfit. Half the same as his D-Day in Normandy. I parted company with U.S. Army after uh, saint Lo. Back into the FFI. Uh, with the General de Gaulle. Uh, quite a, a coincidence meeting here. Well, if I hadn't seen you in the mirror, I thought some stranger was giving me the eye. But no, no, I didn't see you. Am I interrupting anything important? Well, uh, Mario and I are... Uh... Uh, you must have influence around here. You have a drink. Power of the press, ma'am. Let's see what my influence and lots of money can accomplish. Maurice! Uh, I've got a better idea. Let's go to my father's celebration. Well, where would he get enough whiskey for a party? <laughs> you don't know my father. To fathers. To men. To Frenchmen. Continuation of the Bresson. This way it was on Chez Haute Chez de Vaux de Maison. Tout le long de Cé, vous le faire voir. François. Ah, you 
my boy, you have a thirsty look in your eyes. Oh, does it show? Maybe it's the way if you have a drink. Andre! And uh, who have we here? Charles Wills. He's a reporter for the Stars and Stripes. This is my father. How do you do, sir? Well, reporter? We don't need a reporter. We need a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> I like this here because it seems to be the only place in town where you can get a drink. And do you know that all these people came to precisely the same conclusion? has made me very proud. We couldn't tell you the good news before, but Helen has been expelled from the university. What? If we're going to have a scene, either ask this young man to leave or introduce us. Marion, please. Helen. Oh, now look, let her alone. After all, I was expelled from Harvard, wasn't I? Why shouldn't a girl follow in her father's footsteps? Excuse me a moment. I'll talk to you later. I have a feeling she'll be talking to me, too. Thanks. Name, please? Oh, Charlie something or other. He uh, says he's a bartender. Oh, yes. Charlie what? The uh, Wills. I wish I were a bartender, a nice civilian bartender. Which will for you a pitch champagne? Merci. Voulez-vous me prêter votre Bien sûr. C'est bien, Si vous ne voudrez pas trop long I told him we knew each other. Well, we do in a way. We're only kissing in our reveal. We were? One of the ones at the wrist bar. <laughs> Etoile? Plaque Vandeau. Now, I know. Near the Dingo Cafe. You do remember. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's the only other place I ran into more uniforms today. <laughs> Are you rich? No. Does that finish me off? No, but it does slow us up a little. <laughs> We're not rich either. We just live that way. Daddy says it's the same thing, only it's much cheaper. I think I like him. That's good. Because he'll try to borrow money from you, and I don't want him to be disappointed. I like the way you kiss him. Dear, I'm afraid I've underestimated the alcoholic capacity of our guests. I'll only be a few minutes. Well, get the bartender here to help you. <laughs> Say, Wills, Wills. Are you one of the wealthy Willses from Maryland? <laughs> oh. This way, Lieutenant. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Where are you from? Milwaukee. Would you help me? Sure. Loaded for good beer, women with lovely legs, and practically no millionaires. <laughs> and you? New York till I was 12. Then Daddy moved us to Paris. When the Germans came in 1940, I was sent to school in Switzerland. That's where the loot's kept. No. Oh. Daddy put it there so the Germans wouldn't drink it. <laughs> Very resourceful man. And lots of fun. Is he? That's his 11th commandment, having fun. Especially now. He says that after a war, everybody should always be gay and have fun. <laughs> Isn't your father a little old for this war? Oh, he wasn't in this one. He was in the 1918 war, and he's been celebrating ever since. Now that the war in Europe is over, what are you going to do? Try to stay out of the war in the Pacific. That's very sensible. That ought to be enough to tame the tiger. Charles, I was wondering what had happened to you. Nothing. Yes. Everybody 
waiting to meet you. Well, I've really got, got to report back to the paper for some sort of story. Oh, can't you stay just a few minutes? I'm sorry, I've got a deadline. Oh, Lieutenant, don't take the party with you. Oh. <laughs> That's a nice laugh. Do you think someday soon we might be rich? Could you come back later? All right, I'll try. Uh, better yet, I'll meet you. You call and tell me where. All right. Hello? Who is this, please? Who? Oh, Helen. This is Charlie Wills. No, no, Charlie, the bartender. The army bartender? That's right. Could you give Marion a message, please? Tell her that the lights of Paris go on tonight for the first time since the war began. Well, she wanted to meet me. At the Arc de Triomphe, right by the shrine for the unknown soldier. Thank you. Le général de Gaulle va se vous délivrer par les romans de tous à celui qui dort à jamais inconnu, à jamais présent, sous la bouche des victoires. Again. You were asleep. Only my eyes. And my arm. They're weaklings. Your arm and my eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, where are the others? Mm -hmm. They're not bad eyes. Promise me something. Promise. <laughs> Don't ever let the celebration end. 
there'll be another celebration when the rest of the war is over. But it is over. For us, it's over. I'm sick to death of death. I want to enjoy things and have fun and live like every day is the last day. Wouldn't that be nice? A lifetime full of last days. Except it never really would be a last day. You're too serious. Make that nice smile. I don't care if you're not rich. Yes, he did. He's trying to make time with me. <laughs> Sam! What is it? I don't know what Powdered eggs! Chocolate! You shall not go unrewarded, my boy. Come to think of it, your generosity shall be repaid this very day. Now, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Look, right. meat eggs. About the powdered eggs. You see, they look something like Never eggs. Never mind, we'll cook them in sherry. That'll make them taste like eggs. Helen, mm. please, I wish to make some small token of appreciation. Charles, my boy. A golden opportunity awaits us. Now, the question is, are we equal to the challenge? Well, what is it, sir? Benedictine in the fourth race today. He'll go to the post at 10 to 1. At a mile and three-eighths, he can't lose. Why not? Um, it's a trade secret. Daddy means he has a hot tip, right? Another hot tip? Look, we have less than two hours to become wealthy. I think I can come along. I'll make a phone call. Excellent. Now, if we pool our resources, uh, what is your capital, my boy? Well, $40. Let's see. That means oh. if we pool our resources, we have $40. What a pity. Maybe I can borrow some. Don't you do it, Charles. He'll keep you as broke as he is. Opportunity, my dear, is concerned with the future, not the past. Oh, look. If it's collateral you're worrying about, I happen to own oil leases in Texas that are worth, uh, well, you know, Texas. Oh, Daddy. The oil leases are a family joke. Plenty of leases, but not one drop of oil. Charlie. What? I feel lucky today. I'll see what I can dig up. I have the utmost confidence in the courage and ingenuity of the United States Army. To horse, my boy, to horse. Destiny hates a laggard. The paper said the Don't be thing. nervous. Daddy's really very brilliant. Well, what could possibly make me nervous? If we lose the race, I'll owe half a year's pay. The money belongs to four captains who fought their way out of Bass Storm with their bare hands. <laughs> we won't lose. Well. Did you bet it all? Every penny, and at 12 to 1. Why did the odds go up? The suckers think that Benedictine will lose. What can you expect of agnostic, my boy? Over this way, what? Which one is Benedictine? Uh, number four. He lay back for the first half mile. He looks scrawny. Lean, my boy, lean and ready and fit. Who gave you this tip? Benedictine. Running beautifully. Where is he? Sixth, in perfect position. Smarter. Helen. 
I think I'll buy a new dress with my share of the winning. Surprise. Not so much surprise as relief. You know, at uh, 12 to 1, that makes your share. Maybe there's another race fixed today. You fixed? Can... Fixed race, my boy? You mean this race wasn't fixed? <laughs> You've been reading too many crime novels. <laughs> there was no hot tip either, was there? Well... You just picked a crazy long shot out of a hat. Intuition and experience, my boy. But we could have gotten killed. It's a wonderful way to make a living, isn't it? <laughs> American Forces Network in Paris. A pall of black destruction and chaos still hangs over Hiroshima. Events are now moving swiftly. The president of the... Hey, Marie, oh, oh, oh. you hear the news? First thing first. It'll take more than one bomb, Dan, this keeper. One will get you 20, it's over in a week. Will you cover 60 bucks for it? You got it. Don't do it. Barney just came from the office. Japan offered to surrender here. What? Where yeah. we let the Emperor stay in his throne? When are we going home? Yeah, Charlie, what's the dope on discharges? Well, if you start right now, you're already behind 10,000 other guys. I have to get right back to the office. Why? I tried to phone you. Don't ever phone if you can possibly come yourself. And don't ever leave if you can stay. Maybe we can meet for late supper or something. Pussy. Is it really over, the war? Because I want to buy you silk shoes, silk socks, silk shorts. Started over here and stopped a second. Must have lost it. We've got a special edition coming out. You better hurry. I'll get you a taxi first. Taxi! Now you stop fussing about me. Will you will you wait for me? I think I'll go home early and give Daddy a shock. But in this rain. I may not be able to cook and to sew, but I really can find myself a taxi. <laughs> it's the first thing I learned at finishing school. Now you go on here. You're a girl after my own heart. Make no mistake about it. I'm after it, all right. Messages? Every one. Can I go in now? Charles? Hi. How do you feel? The nurse answers all the stop questions. The patient improves, but it is required not to really hurt. Uh, I was going to ask her to dance, but I guess that's out, huh? I was expecting a younger, more attractive nurse. She's the fourth in two weeks. Daddy's a pincher. Get 
that guilty look off your face? I lost your umbrella. I gave you the flu. Don't be silly. It was raining. I got wet, so I got the flu. And it's not your fault. Wondering how you'd look out of uniform. Even better. <laughs> it's my fault. I would have caught this anyway. I catch cold even from weather forecast. Thank you for the lovely flowers. Oh. What's the matter? I don't know. You look so pale and sweet and faceless. Remember, the nurse is right outside that door. Not that I'll call it. One thing I learned these last weeks. I love you. You loved me the first day. I did. You sure did. We should have told each other then. Look at all the headway we could have made. For the first time in my life. I wish I had lots of money. Oh. Money. Daddy says it isn't what you have, it's what you owe. I don't even owe enough. And what are your prospects, young man? Prospects? My old job on the news is 65 a week. Please. I'm only supposed to think beautiful thoughts. <laughs> Do a part of General Motors need a president or something? Well, the Paris office of the Europa News Service needs a reporter. Paris. It doesn't pay as much as a New York job. But you don't need money to have fun in Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been working on a book. I should get back to the Why States. Why can't you write your book here? Oh, Charlie, darling, please marry me and let's stay here, please. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Isn't it a little crazy? Yes, it is crazy. If you had any sense, you'd walk right out that door and never see me or call me again. Maybe send back my umbrella. Call it quits. But I haven't any sense. No sense at all. You have no sense. I have a one degree temperature. If I were 98.6, this would never happen. Forgive me, but uh, I'm rather enjoying playing the anxious father. After all, it's Helen's first marriage, you know. Only marriage, sir. Tut, tut. No arrogance, please. <laughs> Helen tells me that you're a very serious-minded person. You know, both feet on the ground, hard-working, industrious. Well, I try to be, sir. I tell you frankly, these are not the qualities I'd hope for in a son-in-law. I'll uh, go even further. They're uh, not the qualities to make Helen happy. Oh, well, sir, I, uh, I'm going to work on a Paris news agency. I'll be surrounded by carefree, irresponsible characters. Some of it's bound to rub off on me. Mm. Well, let us hope so. Tell me, do I, uh, do I strike you as being an unusual father? You certainly do. It's a very straightforward answer. Try to overcome this tendency. You understand, of course, that I can't afford to give you a large wedding. I don't care for one, thanks. Care for a drink? Oh, yes, I'd love one, thank you. That's too bad. You know, I'm getting a little low on this stuff, and I was... Oh, going... that's all right. Ah, here you are. Oh, thank you. Do you know what you're getting for a wedding present? Well, Helen told me what not to expect. My dear sir, you are getting the old family joke. 4,000 acres of invaluable oil land. Thank you very much, sir. Not at all. You know, after all, it's not bad being an oil baron, even if there's no oil. Huh? <laughs> Did 
Did you give Helen your permission? I had to give her my permission. Huh? Claude has asked me to be the mother of his children. Really? That, that, that seems a bit irregular, doesn't it? Dad, Claude has asked her to marry him. Oh. Well. Then I suppose I must kiss you. You uh, say best wishes to the bride or congratulations to the groom, or which way is it? I forget. You just go ahead and kiss each other. What did you put into that kiss? Well, why don't you come here and find out? Helen getting married, Marion getting married. A father abandoned in middle age. <laughs> what man could ask for more? Give me a rewrite of that, will you? How you feeling? Pretty good. Good, good. That beard looks good. Oh, Charlie, if you're getting around and asking for money, not a chance, I haven't got a franc. If I had any, I wouldn't give it to you anyway. The prices aren't going up here like in the States. Neither are the white fellas, please. I got a wife and baby waiting in the hospital. I need 500 bucks to get them out of heart. Why don't you leave them there? It's the healthiest place in town. Uh, you can make jokes. You're not a father. Oh, I don't know. All the returns aren't in yet. How about it, Your Highness? Nothing like a hot tub after a long day of horror. Ah, there she is. <laughs> Look at those legs. With your regular man, Jibber. Forgive me, Highness. This is not the folly to zero. I beg you for this. What can you expect from the common herd, my lady? Huh? Oh, merci, Monsieur Ellsworth. Je vais sécher et habiller bébé maintenant. I have good news. Fine, fine. Where's Helen? Charlie? Oh, oh how's Marion? She's fine. Oh, it's fine. Fine. Are you fatso? Oh, fatso is right. Look at me. Bulging out of my own clothes. I happen to be insane about each and every bulge. Where's Vicky? Being bathed. I just can't help it. You look so pretty to me. Of course, I've been looking at my editor all day. <laughs> oh, did you hit him for the bonus? Mm hmm I got it, too. Only it's not a bonus, it's a loan. And I sent it right off to the hospital. So you can tell your daughter to come out now. She's all paid for. I'll never, never be a size 10 again. Vicky will be exactly like you. Then I'll be surrounded by beautiful women. <laughs> that compliment and a martini would just about square you for putting me in jail for nine months. Mmm, martini coming right out. appointed to the prosecutor's staff today. Well, what about your private practice? But this is more important. There are many collaborators who must be brought to justice. Sure. And the lawyers who defend them will get rich, and you'll get convictions and be broke. Ta-da! Gentlemen, the Queen. <sighs> Hello, Highness. <laughs> well, what happened to her hair? She had some yesterday. Wishful thinking, that's all. You know, she's not bad for a first try. You'd better be beautiful. A genius is terribly rich. The beauty she got from my daughter, the genius she inherited from me, you better get busy with your contribution, my boy. The last nine months I've devoted to you. Now I'm going to have fun. What do you say, sweetheart? Whee! Hey. <laughs> no guts, eh? <laughs> 
I was wondering if you could, uh, 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 thank you. I uh, trust you're keeping a record of these loans, huh? Good night. Not a thing. It's the great American novel. Charlie, will you still worship me when you're famous? even better than the first book. It's beautiful. It's too good for them. Let's send it off tonight. Five years since the end of World War II. Veterans everywhere pray that peace will come with the new year. Charlie, I lost the race and your wife won't console me. Hi, Charlie. Next time win the race, huh? <laughs> Good night. Look.
You haven't told her yet, huh? Why spoil her fun? Why let it spoil yours? I'm peculiar, that's why. I used up a year of my life trying to write a book. For some unaccountable reason, I thought somebody would want to publish it. My boy, you're not in the least peculiar. You're merely naive. Now, I knew a publisher once, and he made it a rule never to read a manuscript. Oh, he'd smell it and weigh it and feel it and taste it. But read it? No. Now, if this manuscript smelt and weighed and felt and tasted like garbage, then he published it. Would you like to know the secret of success? Mediocrity, my boy. To be a rich writer, you've got to remember your three R's. Riches, ruffians, great. Run down to the police station, will you? What for? They're holding some crazy American dame. Seems she held up traffic by taking a dive into a fountain at noon today. Not much of a story, is it? No, but you know how Americans in Paris love to read about Americans in Paris. All right, what's her name? Helen Wells. <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> No, he's acting as if you didn't know me. I'm your wife. In sickness and in health and dry clothes and down. You know how you are with colds. You better go home and change. We can't go home because it's a dingo. Again? Isn't she better off in a nice, respectable bistro than all alone at home? Is this going to get in the papers? One more crazy American jumping into one more beautiful fountain. That isn't news anymore. Is that why you did it? To get into print? I guess it was silly and stupid, but it was fun. Was it? Well, almost fun. On the verge of being fun. Only it never is quite, is it? No. Somehow it never is. I don't know why. Maybe it's something about Paris or me or the Times or something. It's as if you've got to hurry up. Hurry before... It's like you're trying to find out something terribly important, Tony. Only you never do. Oh, come on now. You always laughed at these things. Took a little time, but you laughed. It isn't that. Campbell just sold a cereal in the Saturday Evening Post for $15,000. And you hate him for it? Oh, darling, I think that's wonderfully human of you. <laughs> <laughs> What are you, running for office or something? <laughs> oh, you know me, always good for a couple of laughs. Mrs. Reeves. It's a good thing to make people laugh. Well, don't I get anything? I paid the fine to get her out of jail. Why, you're my chérie, un petit moment, s'il vous plaît. Please, you don't be messy. <laughs> Thank you. 
to show you. This morning, Mama trust my teeth. No, Vicky. Not half and half. All English. Watch, Daddy. Watch. <laughs> Hold it. I haven't been kissed yet. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Barney. You want to see something great? to be hitting the bottle, isn't she? It's the floor, darling. Even Pavlova couldn't dance on a floor like this. You all right? I'm sorry. Say something nice. It's swell, kid. Great. The boss wants me on an interview with the Royal Francais. I can't handle it. Got a heavy date. Cover for me, will you? Uh, the woman's name is Lorraine Quall. Who's Lorraine Quall? Cafe Society. So long, kid. You got a great act there. Great. All it needs is a finish. Oh, you've got the right finish, haven't you, sweetheart? Right into my arms. <laughs> Mr. Wills. This is Paul. I am Wills from the Europa News Service. I hate to be late. I'm sorry. And I need a drink. Leon? You say, Mrs. Quam? See. You can skip the usual. Paris is beautiful. American women love French men. French men love American women. Prices are too high. I haven't picked out my next husband yet. Might be the bartender. <laughs> At least he has talent. You've been interviewed before. The last time, uh, an hour ago. She wasn't very young or very attractive. The interview was very, very short. You can take your time. A first trip to Paris? <laughs> no, no. First divorce here, that's all. Uh, why'd you choose Paris? I get saddle sores in Reno, and I lose too much money in Las Vegas. According to our files, you were married four times. Three. And almonds don't count. Leon? Is something wrong? Is something right? <laughs> you... You really can't tell one of my marriages from another without a program. Husband number one, for love, failure. Husband number two, for money, failure, except for the money in the name Quarrel. <laughs> Husband number three, an almond. He forgot to tell me he already had a wife. Husband number four, a bullfighter. Four times the bet, haven't had a hit. Any children involved? No. And that's my only contribution to humanity. I told you I was a failure. Shouldn't you be writing this down? Oh, the interview stopped long ago. Thank you. I'm hungry. What about dinner? Uh, I'm not on an expense account. I'm just a struggling newspaper man. <laughs> well, stop struggling. The dinner is on my poor husband. I change and I'll be right down. But what about the... Please, Mr. Wills. At home, my analyst charges $50 an hour to listen to me talk. Taxi. Oh, Charles. Oh, hello, Claude. I'm glad to see you. How have you been? Fine. You look fine. How are you, Marion? Fine. You look fine. I'm fine, too. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, my sister-in-law, Mrs. Mateen, Mr. Mateen, Mrs. Paul. Okay. Uh, Claude's with the prosecutor's office. Oh. I hope we haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> Uh, 
Mrs. Quarrel just arrived in Paris. I'm uh, interviewing her. How's Helen? Fine, fine. Oh, and you should see Vicky. She's... You know, we really should see more of each other. After all, family. And... I'll get in touch with Helen in the morning. Good night, Mrs. Quarrel. Good night. Good night. Good night. Charles, I really would like to see you again. Good night. Good night, Paul. Thank you. is, Helen. Now, what's one little wife among all your husbands? I imagine you'll catch it when you get home. From Helen? Not Helen. She's the most wonderful, most understanding. Do you mind if we don't go on with the interview? Somehow, I'm suddenly cold sober. And it's awfully late. And if I don't get back to the office and do the story... Can I go with you? To the office, I mean. Why? I don't know. Probably never see each other again, and I... I like to drag the night out a little. And I should see that story. Well, that office is awful cold and dingy at this hour of the morning. You'd be surprised how often I feel cold and dingy. I'll be simpatico. Good morning. Now, what's the matter? Oh, Charlie, how could you? Don't Charlie me, sister. What about you? I'm sick and tired of you sitting around these crummy cafes day and night, the darling of every phony, petted by writers who don't write, adored by painters who don't paint. And what do you write? Interviews with useless, sloppy women. At least I don't jump into fountains and lap up all the liquor in Paris. Well, why don't you ask me why I drink? Why I jump into fountains? That's right. Blame me. Blame me. Did I want to stay in Paris? What right have you to criticize me? You're suspicious. You? Ah! That's a laugh. Now you just listen to me. Do you realize I've been out all night? Poor darling. All right, I'll take her to school. Well, don't you care I've been? You look awful. Was it a job assignment? I was interviewing a woman. Nice. We have much better coffee than that. She was a rich, beautiful, exciting woman. She was interested in me. Well, don't you even care? What are you trying to say to me? I'm trying to say that I love you. What kind of a woman did you say she was? How many kinds are there? Was she really pretty? I'd lie about it, but Marion saw it too. Yes, she's very pretty. Marion? Well, we ran into Claude and Marion. She'll probably try to build it up into something, but... Just how rich and how pretty was she? Oh, shut up. Oh, I don't hear a thing, do you? I'll be back in a minute.
it's a lie. You know how Marion has never liked me. Charlie, we're rich. Because I was celebrating last night. I stopped by Marion's on my way home this morning and had breakfast with her and told her that. How much we worth? Marion says that you said that we're stinking rich. Oh, Marion always editorializes. Money has no odor. Oh, especially lots of it. Jessica say? English, Vicky, English. Are we millionaires? Insanity. There's a wide streak of insanity in this family, Vicky, on your mother's side. We have hit an oil gusher. We what? Oil, darling, is supposed to put Texas on the map. You mean those worthless oil leases of ours? A generous wedding present from me, which I trust you will remember and keep in mind. How rich are we? Well, there's a state law about only pumping out 80 barrels a day. Now, at $2 a barrel, that's, uh, that's... That's only $160 a day. Seven days a week? Of course, oil is an act of God. But that's $1,100 a week. And 27.5% tax-free. What if we sold out? My thoughts exactly. A capital gain. But if we didn't sell out, we'd have an income for life. Is everybody from Milwaukee cautious? Sensible. Just sensible. Well, we decorate everything from top to toe. Me too, I'll have my hair cut. We'll take Marion's room and turn it into a riding room for you. Do you suppose we really could run to $50,000 in a year? Well, we could try. We? Oh. oh. No, what? Of course. We could build another well. Marion never said a word about running into you last night. Mama, what's oil? <laughs> oh, Vicky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No more deadlines, no more journalism. The job is dead. Lower away. Catch it! Hey! <laughs> what are you gonna do now, Charlie? Now? Now I'll finish my third novel. If this one doesn't get published, it'll get published. I have no money worries. I got no job worries. What would I use for an excuse? If you got enough money, no excuses are necessary. Good luck good to you, luck. Charlie. All good the luck. Good luck. This one will be a good luck. luck. That'll be five thousand back. Oh, I should like to do more for charity. Oh, well, that's nice. Helen, a partner in Washington will play. Uh, Six thousand for another kid. I'm really worth much more, you know. But I never well, expected to see you at a charity. Neither did I. Something wrong? Yeah. Vicky? No, Charlie. Look, he hasn't moved from his room all day. He's still there. He won't eat anything. He won't say anything. Just sits there in the dark, alone. Have you had dinner? Do you want me to fix something? Go away, Helen. Let me alone. He 
Is it something I've done? Please, Charlie, whatever it is. All right. You're a good wife, you're devoted and loyal. You've done your duty. Now, please go back to your party and let me alone. I'm only trying to help. Help what? You, me, us. I don't know. Help what, this? Can you help another rejection? Can anybody help that? Why? Because some publisher turned you down again. Yes. Again. Again, Helen. And again. Can you help it that I'm stupid enough to spend five years writing three stupid books? Can you help it that I'm no writer? But you are. You're wonderful. They're the ones that are stupid, not you. Dear Mr. Wills, we regret to inform you. I'm no good, Helen. Go away and let me alone. Oh, Charlie. Please, I can't explain my failure to you. So be a good girl and let me alone. You're not a failure, not to me. When I was 20, I used to think I would write great books. I would be able to do this because I was different. I wanted perfection, and that made me different. But I'm not 20 anymore, and it's too late now. We'll try again. No! I just don't have what it takes. All I need to do now is get used to the idea. I'm rich. For the price of a few drinks, I could buy fame and friends, or something like them. Why spend years writing? I can hold court in some noisy bar and criticize writing and talk about writing and... You'll never make it, boy. Twenty-five bucks says I do. Stop me. We've already got seventy-five bets. Make it a hundred. All right, a hundred. Sucker. Fatty shots. Fatty. Charlie. Oh, you funny, baby. Come on, Charlie. Hold it, Charlie. Ah, voilà, mon vieux. Attention, il va te battre. Oh, no, Charles. Fais attention. Hey, Charlie, il va te battre. Fatty, Charles. Fatty, Charles. Charlie, hold it. Fatty. Fatty. Charlie, mets le voilà. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> All right, Charlie. But Aaron's still champion, and this is the arm that did it. <laughs> Waiting for the car. Being souped up for the race. Race? Sports car event. Monte Carlo in Paris. Anybody phone? No. It's kind of quiet, isn't it? It's nice, though, isn't it? Why hasn't Vicky come in to say good night? Your daughter is in a complete state of crisis. One of her front teeth fell out. How's she taking it? 
Oh, life is completely over for her. She says she'll come in if she doesn't have to smile or open her mouth. Sure, I know a big dramatic situation when I see one. You don't really mind staying in tonight, do you? Of course not. How's it going? Uh, not easy getting started again. But you promised. And I'm trying. When you make it. Muscles will be all set hard and you won't be able to smile. They say you're the wickedest woman in Paris. You know what I'll look like pretty soon? <laughs> May I borrow a pair of cufflinks? I can't see them. <laughs> Both of you put your upper plates back in. You're making me self-conscious. In the morning, my dear. I have to get up at six tomorrow. Well, that'll work out fine, because I should be getting in by then. Good night, darling. Bon nuit, Telemark. Bon nuit. <laughs> Milk, literature. What's the meaning of this? I'm supposed to be working. Your idea? It's a fine idea. Don't you corrupt him. I wouldn't think of it. But we will miss you at the Wilsons. Can you imagine throwing a white tie party simply because it's Thursday? Couldn't we go? Oh, Charlie. Really, it would be good for me. And tomorrow morning, I'll chain myself to that chair. Please. Why do I always end up saying yes when I really mean no? By the way, I'm bringing a friend. He's an international tennis bum. Paul? Now, don't worry about him at the Wilsons. He's invited everywhere. Come to think of it, that's uh, how he makes his living. You mean he gets paid for being a guest? Mm, no, no. He, he steals the silverware. Charming. Paul, my, uh, my daughter and Charles Wills, my son-in-law. How do you do? Enchanté. I hear you played in Rome. I play all the tournaments. How do you make out? Brilliantly. Until the second round, then invariably some young Australian or American schoolboy beats me. But nobody beats him in jumping over the net and congratulating the winner. <laughs> I'm the champion, graceful loser. Forgive me, but you're the lady in the fountain, the Café Dingo. Oh, it's my favorite painting. Whenever I'm in Paris, I go there to stare at it. Well, you're in luck. Now you're going to stare at the original. Come with me, Paul. Until later. Sort of appealing, isn't it? What? Appealing. Yes, in a revolting sort of way. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chante. Mostly old age. You're going to drive in this race yourself? Certainly. What do you get if you win? What do you get? You get to be winner. That's what you get. Well, what do you know? It's my wife. Hi, your wife. All right, sporting blood. Run along to the locker room. Come back in a few minutes, Paul. 
Donnie's guilty conscience. It won't take long. Oh. Hey, what kind of a wife are you, dancing with other men? The average kind, neglected. Oh. What's with Mr. Tennis and you? Oh, we're Paul and Helen now. Mmm. Sweet and attentive. Doesn't think it's terrible at all that I'm married and have a seven-year-old daughter. Maybe he just wants to be mother. <laughs> Not exactly. He's made several suggestions. That wasn't one. Well, let me know how he makes it. Lorraine! Lorraine Paul! You've forgotten me. <laughs> Believe me, the only thing I've forgotten about you is your name. Wills! You're open new service. Charlie! <laughs> Oh, it's so good to have my arms around you again. Oh, you've got me confused with somebody else. We never got that far. Why not? You get married again? Of course. And I'm in Paris now to get rid of him. No. Are you still married? Yes, of course. To the same woman. To the same wonderful woman. I have to say that because she's standing right here. <laughs> May I present my wife, Helen? Mrs. Quall. Oh, it's Mrs. Johnson now. Oh, but not for long. How do you do? I'm not quite sure. You're much prettier than I expected. And you're much less beat up than you have a right to be. <laughs> uh, is it all right if I uh, come back now? Oh, Paul Lane, this is the uh, temporary Mrs. Johnson. The best mediocre tennis player in the world. I've seen you around my hotel. Oh, I always stay at the Royal Frontier. Tennis, anyone? Yes. Yeah. to show Lorraine how fast the car would go. <laughs> Do you mind if Paul takes me home? <sighs> Paul. Paul who? Paul anybody. Party like this, there must easily be six or seven Pauls around. You can't hold a serious discussion with her. I can get up to 60 miles an hour with this baby. <laughs> Second gear. <laughs> It's a habit you must try and grow out of, kitten. Why do grown-ups drink milk when they have all 32 teeth? Well, we develop butterflies in our stomach, and milk seems to quiet them down. How do they get in your stomach? They usually hide in the bubbles of champagne. But it's a well-known fact of hydrodynamics. Good night, my dear. Good night. Get your coat, Picky. Can Daddy come with us to the bar? We're going to church first. Is it Sunday already? What happened to Friday and Saturday? Run along, Vicky. Are you coming, Daddy? 
I'll meet you at the bar later. Church on Friday? What happens at church on Friday? The usual thing. Well, as long as you're in that sort of mood, can I expect a little sympathy for this head? Heads? Very little. What'd I do? That I'd be very interested to hear. You look so grim. I'm waiting to hear the end of the midnight ride at Paul Revere. You got the car up to 103 miles an hour and then started back, right? All right. Then what? Then nothing. I dropped Lorraine at her hotel, or she dropped me at the house. I forget which. Sure that's all you've forgotten? Sorry to disappoint you, but nothing happened last night. Tonight's another night. She'll be beautiful again. You'll be full of wine again. And nothing will happen again. Who took you home last night? That tennis player? He didn't exactly take me home. Oh. He asked me back to his hotel for nightcap. I went. Did you have to fight your way out? Oh, there was a battle, all right. But it wasn't Paul I had to fight with. It was myself. Did you win? Now, you listen. I'm under the same strains and stress as you are. I live in Paris, too. And I'm bored, too. And all that time, I had a picture in my mind of you and that woman. And don't underestimate Paul. He's charming and attentive and... And I'm so unhappy. Charlie, let's go home. All right, as soon as Vicky finishes with... I mean, really home. America. Home. It won't work running home. Charlie, let's go back before we crack up. Please. If you love me, let's go back home. You used to say, let's live it up a little. You were right. There's lots of time to go home. Plenty of time for everything. Suppose time runs out on us. You're just having a bad day, darling. Tomorrow will be... I've been having a bad day for a year now. Maybe I'm growing up. It's too late to grow up. I tell you what, come racing with me. We'll go to Monte Carlo. Why is winning a race so important? I don't know. Maybe I could do a short story about racing. Why not? All right. I get a kick out of racing. It's fun. To quote your illustrious father, nothing is more important than fun. Does that make me sound stupid? Is that what you want me to say? Come with me, Helen. No, John. Well, maybe I'll take somebody else. Wouldn't that be reasonable? You'll find a reason to make it reasonable. Look out for Vicky, will you? Well, where are you going? To do something important. Buy a new hat.
the sun and stars. Go on now, quickly, two of them. Wills? Mrs. Wills. She here? As they drink champagne from your slipper. We've already done that. How do you like it? Don't you think he makes me look years drunker? I hope you don't mind a harmless little dinner. Oh, come on, Paul. You can do better than that. You could tell them to go away for instance. Leave us alone. Not me, dear. Is your responsibility. Oh, please, we're all very civilized, no? No. That's my boy. Touch me again and I'll take a poke at you. I wouldn't do that, Charlie. Because then I'd have to take a poke at the rain. <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> Why, you, me, all of us. Very funny. Love is never, of course. You can see that, can't you? Costa. I stay married and keep you on the side. And when I'm lonely, I... Oh, 
brother. Well, the idea wasn't invented just now. It's done all the time. Half your crowd have arrangements. Is that what you expected of me? Helen, listen. What's the matter with you? Suddenly, I've got very cold feet. He's outside. He can't see her. I won't let him. Where are you? My umbrella. I'm sorry, darling. So sorry. Please forgive me. Hello. 
always love you. Mr. Wills. This is no way to get out of here. You better go, son. I think he's alone. What are you going to do, son? You've got to talk to Marion. If you don't, you're going to lose Vicky. She's going into court today and going to ask for custody of Vicky, charging you're unfit as a parent. She's right. I'll hurt Vicky just as I did Helen. What do you do? I want to go home. All the way home. Thing of beauty, huh? Sorry I'm late now. I live Americans. Always in a haste. But if it's a rich American, it's even Not worse. rich anymore, Maurice. What happened to the uh, oil? No? No, Maurice. It changed back to salt water a year ago. Oh, that's unfortunate. Maybe not. You must stand with us tonight, like old times, Charles. I don't know. It depends. Janet will be very disappointed. We have many things to remember together. Come back, Charles, please. Oh, I'll try. I'll try. Charlie. Hello, son. What happened? Oh, a uh, slight stroke. When? Eight or nine months ago. But you never wrote me about it. Uh, it wasn't serious. Mostly old age. Charlie, I 
read your book. It's good. Very honest. Thanks. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it fine. Uh, here, for you. Havana cigars. The kind you like. Shall I open them for you? Oh, later. Uh, doctor says when I'm better. Huh? Where's Vicky? You've come for her. If I can get her back again. Good. told everybody at school you'd be gray. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, here. Yeah. Claude. Good morning, Charles. I'm very happy to see you. Thanks. For everything, thanks. As soon as I got your telephone message, I... I'm just cool and got to be. Look, Daddy, look. Oh, 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 oh. It's wonderful, as usual. Daddy, what? could we go to the bar? Remember the railroad train? Well, I... Oh, please, please. That was the very first thing I wanted to do when you came. You've got about an hour till Mario comes back. I'll wear my new coat. Okay. How is Marianne? She's fine. I want you to know, Claude, how much I appreciate... Oh, I didn't do anything. I showed Mario your letter. She couldn't stop you from seeing Vicky. I was hoping she'd let me have Vicky back. I've got to have her, Claude. I need her. Yes, I think she needs you, too. Thanks. Daddy! Daddy, hurry, Daddy! The hour's almost up! About your book. And about Mario. If we are careful, it may be all right. Nothing, darling. Why? You didn't even look at me. You didn't even wave at me. Oh, you give me another chance. You get back on that train. Daddy, may I sit off the next drive? Oh. I'm really getting too old for that sort of thing. <laughs> Don't you think so? Yes, you're real old now. <laughs> Darling, do you ever think of your mother? Oh, yes. I don't want you to forget her. I have a picture of her in my room. Grandpa says I look like her. Do you think so, Daddy? Yes. Very much like her. That's lucky for me. Daddy, why don't 
when I live with you. Why? Aren't you happy? Yes. But not perfectly happy. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I know what you mean. Then I can come and live with you? I don't know. I don't know. Don't you want me to? Oh, of course, darling. Oh, Daddy, if you really love me, please let me come and live with you. Please. We'll see. Say yes, Daddy. Yes. Wasn't so hard to say yes, was it? Hello, Uncle Claude. From the Bois, we went to Hermes, and we bought something for you, Uncle Claude, and for Aunt Marion, and something for me, too. It's a wonderful store and a wonderful day. Oh, Aunt Marion! You want to see what we bought for you? It's a surprise, look. You're late for your nap. But I thought today... Go on up to your room. Don't you want to see your present? Do as I say, please. Hello, Marianne. Hello, Gerald. It's good to see you again. Sorry about getting back so late with Vicky. Oh, well, she would have been too excited to sleep anyway. It's very important. You've done a wonderful job with Vicky. She's grown up. How do you find Paris? Well, most of the old crowd is gone. Funny, I dropped in at the Dingo Bar this afternoon. Just to see how it looked. There wasn't a man I knew. I should think you've had enough of bars. As I wrote you, I take one drink every afternoon, but no more. And I take that drink deliberately. Just so the idea of taking a drink won't get too big. Of course, Charles. We understand. Sometimes I forget and don't take the drink. But, well, I went to the Dingo, see how it looked. I went to a few other places, too. Places where uh, Helen and I... Look, Marion, I just can't keep on talking. I'm all tied up in knots. Can I have the key back? I don't know. It's all very well to talk about one drink a day. But what guarantee have we that... Well, when I, I think of those wasted years... But I think about them, too. hard now, Marion. I've, I've got a contract for several short stories, and I, I'm starting on another book. And my sister's coming from Milwaukee to, to keep house for me. I want the key. Please, Marion. If we wait much longer, I'll, I'll lose a childhood and, and my chance for a home. I just can't lose her, don't you see? It'll be almost like having Helen back. Marion? I can't help it. I'll never in my life be able to forget that morning when Helen soaked and, and shivering. 
You locked her out. Marion. But you want to remember one night. How long are you going to make me pay for that one night? What about those years Helen and I loved each other? I don't want to hear about it. Marion. You're not going to let me have Vicky? No. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm sorry, Charles. What'll I do? We'll see. Get dinner stuff. Marion. There's no use talking about it. He's not getting Vicky. Not now, not tomorrow, never. Why? Do you hate him that much? Yes. For what he did. Yes. Yes. It's true. He committed an unforgivable crime against you personally. He's guilty of never knowing you loved him. You found him, but he married Helen. Yes, he's guilty of that, too. And being guilty, of course, he must be punished. The penalty? What would hurt him most? Take away what he loves most. His little girl. Oh, darling, we can't have everything we want. Take me. I wanted all your love. I wanted our own child. A child out of our love, not out of your disappointment. I don't think Helen would have wanted you to be alone. Daddy! Daddy! 